Hello, and today we're going to talk about how to make an Elementor pricing table with a drop down pricing list. First, we're going to go to plugins and install WooCommerce. Go add new plugin, WooCommerce. Find it right here, top one, install, and we're going to activate. This will just be for example purposes to create some products to display in our pricing table so that we're working with real data. So we'll go ahead and skip it. Set my region to Canada, and I'm gonna choose this option that says add products, and I'm gonna choose variable product. I'm gonna call this product one, and it's a variable product, so we're gonna have multiple variations on this. So I'm gonna say variable, Go down to attributes, and we'll call this size. Say small, medium, large. Save those. We we'll use that little pipe character to split them up, and then you'll see variations here. Generate variations, which will create the variations from what we just made, small, medium, large. And now we can go in here and set the variation price to five, 10, and 15. Perfect. I'm going to go ahead and publish that product. Now over on my test page, which we've used in previous Elementor videos, I'm going to go ahead and create a quick pricing table from scratch, just using the plus here. I'm going to hit the two column layout, and then I'm going to go ahead and right click in the white space here and say add new container. And I'm just going to go to each of these smaller ones and crank the width to 100% and 100%. And now we have a nice three column layout there. Then I'm going to go to this first one and go to style. I'm going to give it a background of just a maybe a light, light, light white, just a little darker than the page behind it. Then I'm going to go to border, box shadow, and hit the pencil there. And I'm going to set it to horizontal, I'll keep it zero actually. Vertical, I'll drop down a bit, increase the blur to spread around where it is, a little more below it, and then I'm gonna change the color to barely opaque. That was just this really nice soft glow to it. And then what I'll do is I'll just add some basic text to make it look more uh, pricing table-y. And so we'll add a heading to it, product one. And I will give that style, align center. I'll add a text editor below that. And I'm just gonna list off some features, such as uh, comfortable fit, um, machine. I'll do shift enter to keep it tight, your favorite shirt. And then I'm going to make that centered as well. Give it a little more personality with just a little bit of font weight. Make it semi-bold. And increase the font size just a bit. That looks nice. And for fun, let's add some check mark emojis to the end of this. To make it look a little more marketing-like. Now we're going to select the overall container again and go to advanced. And we want to give this a little more room to air out, so we're going to unlink these and give it some padding top of 50 maybe yeah 40 looks good and same on the bottom 40 nice and then what we're going to do to make this look it's a little more fleshed out is we're going to right click and duplicate this twice we're actually just going to delete these other two containers and then we're going to click on the overall row by hitting the three dots. And if we switch the column gaps down here to say 20, and that's looking good. And then just to differentiate these, we'll call it product two and product three. Now we need to add the actual WooCommerce functions, the drop down of variations and the add to cart buttons. So for that part, you might've noticed that on the left sidebar in the elements uh, selector, there's a WooCommerce section, uh, which is under the pro, which you'd be like, oh man, I can't use that in the free plan. 
but as far as I know, there's not really one that does exactly what we'd want anyway. Uh, there's custom add to cart, add to cart, uh, so there may be one to make this work, but if we had Pro, we probably would be using the pricing table option anyway, which might include some of these bells and whistles, uh, price list, etc. But we are here to make the most of free Elementor. Uh, and you can also access a lot of these WooCommerce functions by using these short codes. If you go to uh, woo.com slash document slash WooCommerce shortcodes, they are documented. Uh, but I looked through them and I still don't think there's one for listing the variations of a product and showing the add to cart button in one shot. So what we're going to do is we are going to go to good old gravity forms. I created a new one here called product variations. And one cool thing to know about WooCommerce is you can create a custom fancy link that will add a product to cart instantly. So really all we need to do is have a drop down of the variations and then on submit, make sure that link gets hit so that it will go and add that correct product to cart. So it's a little bit of extra work, but if you'd rather not pay for licensing fees and things, um, if you've already got gravity forms, especially this is a great chance to utilize that. So all I've done so far is create this drop down called variation and I set the choices to a small five dollars medium 10 and large 15 and then we go to the submit button change the text to choose product we'll go ahead and save that form and just to show what it'll look like we'll go ahead and go embed copy short code you guys have seen this from the previous video that talks about how to add gravity forms to Elementor click that link in the little card above if you want to see that but we'll go over to our page and we can use the short code or we can use the method described in that video, which is go to the bottom, go to WordPress and go to form right here. And we'll choose product variations. We'll remove the contact us, update that. And let's go ahead and take a look at how this appears. And this is looking pretty good. We are gonna to wanna to add some padding to the left and right of the column, but we'll get to that later. Uh, first, we're gonna go back to our form. And now that we can go and hit choose one of these and hit choose, that's great. It's gonna to redirect to this page and say, thank you for contacting us. We don't want that to happen. And so let's just go ahead and reset that page. We're gonna go up here to settings and confirmations. And here's where the magic happens. So we're gonna say small product for this one. Confirmation type will be a redirect. Condition will be if variation is small. And what we're gonna add is this slash checkout question mark add to cart and then the product ID, which in our case, we can get the product ID to be going back to our products, going to edit on the product going to the variations and the ID for small as we can see right there is 47 and so we'll set this to 47 and we get a little validation here in this case they want us to include the whole URL that is okay go ahead and punch that in there and we'll hit save confirmation and now we can retest this by just refreshing this page and if we choose small and choose product we can see we're taken straight to checkout with that small product in our cart. And so now we'll just complete this setup by going back to confirmations and we can go ahead and duplicate this one and just call this one medium product, change the ID of the redirect to 48. And if it's set to medium, send it to medium, save confirmation. And lastly, we'll set it to large product, which will be 49, large, save, excellent. We don't need to worry about this default confirmation. That one should never get hit as long as uh, one of these are uh, proved to be true, which they will be because we've covered all cases of that drop down. So if we go back to where we were on my first page, refresh, we can now choose any of these. We'll try large, choose product, Large was added, small is still there. Perfect, just as we expect. We'll refresh this page. We'll go ahead and we'll add some side padding to this column here. We'll give it maybe 15 left and right. Give it a little breathing room, but not too much. And then we'll go ahead and we can just copy this to the other pages 
because it's just an example case, but in real life we would create separate forms for the different products and the different IDs where we want them to go. Put that there, put that there, update. Oop, and we need to update the padding on each of these as well. Give that 15, 15, and 15, 15. Update that. Our preview refreshes. And there we go, product one, got our attributes, choose our variation, product two, variation, product three, variation. You could of course style this up further if you wanted to use custom CSS. Uh, you could make the button full width, you could hide the variation label, um, you could tweak this up uh, around these corners, do all kinds of things you might want to do, but uh, this gives you the product table, this gives you the variation selection, and the ability to send things straight to your cart and go right to checkout all with using free Elementor and basic gravity forms. That's all for today. Please be sure to subscribe to the Websites Made Simple channel so we can bring you more tips like these. Thanks for watching and hope you have a great day.